Amendment number 69, Representative Reinbold. Mr. Speaker, I move amendment number 69. There's an objection. Basically, um, what this does is it gets rid of 262,000, it reduces the budget by $262,000. And uh, this is from the Criminal Justice Commission uh, staff that was created in Senate Bill 64. Representative Clayman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to amendment number 69. The, the funding for the Alaska Criminal Justice Commission is a the Criminal Justice Commission is an entity that has been created by this legislature with the task of doing research and analysis and providing an evidence-based method for going forward and looking at ways to improve public safety and use our public safety dollars more wisely and more effectively so that we are improving public safety for all Alaskans, improving how we use our resources for the Department of Corrections and a whole host of things that the Criminal Justice Commission ad addresses on a regular basis and, and provides reports to this legislature. Were we to cut that funding, we would actually uh, cut any basis for having sound research in terms of the policy decisions we're asked to make every day to improve public safety. So I, I oppose this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In wrap up, Representative Reinbold. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to go after public, improving our public safety in every mechanism that I can think of. This criminal justice, some people are calling it criminal injustice commission, worked very passionately, very strongly, very closely with the outside organization, Pew, Pew Foundation, which has heavy lobby in, in our halls. Some of the recommendations, if you look at them from 2015 and 2016, are really shocking. Some things such as uh, geriatric uh, parole, even for sex offenders at certain ages. I believe there's eight or nine new pathways for people to get out of jail. The pre-trial risk assessment is a joke in the public's eye, and I passed out a couple different uh, articles just to show. I mean, the people know that this public safety experiment is a complete failure. And basically, all as this does is it gets rid of a couple positions that are supporting where they're already working with outside influence, uh, the Pew organization. And uh, I just think right now it's a complete public safety disaster out there. And we need to do everything we can to use. I would much rather have this money go to criminal prosecutions uh, in order to um, you know, get us on a better public safety path. One thing that was very concerning to me as well is the definition of recidivism. If you look at the definition of recidivism, uh, it's pretty scary. It basically means, you know, people not getting back into jail, but it means convictions. And so it's very important to look at it. That's why they do, they're doing it based on people entering jail. And so it's actually a benefit when people don't get put in jail. And that's one of the reasons I think the pre-trial pre, uh, risk assessment is keeping them out of jail. And uh, that's why we have this whole new pre-trial system uh, that I tried to get rid of it, maybe in a, in a, in a one coming up. Um, but the bottom line is, is this is, every dollar is very, very important. And this is a social experiment that is not working. And my district, this is their top priority to do everything we can to increase public safety. And so with that, I would urge a yes vote. Are you ready for the question? The question being, shall amendment number 69 pass the House? Members may proceed to vote. Will the clerk please lock the roll? Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Will the clerk please announce the vote? 14 yeas, 26 nays. With a vote of 14 yeas and 26 nays, amendment number 69 has failed to pass the House. Amendment number 70, Representative Johnston. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I move amendment number 70. And I think there's an amendment coming to my amendment. Is there, there isn't a, Objection. Uh, we'll stand at ease until the amendment gets passed out. The, the amendment is passed out. Uh, brief at ease. 
yesterday. Will the House please come to order? Representative Guerra. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move amendment number one to amendment number 70. There's an objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I appreciate um, the maker of the underlying as amendment, amendments um, desire to have data, and um, she's been very consistent on that, and, um, and this amendment will do that. Amendment number one, uh, uh, makes it read so that if a legislator wants a third party report that the department has, um, not just on future Medicaid enrollment projections, that's important, but also um, other, CAID, other Medicaid programs, if there's, if there's a third party report out there and it's not confidential, um, that um, obviously the department should provide it to a legislator upon the legislature. Uh, I support amendment number one to amendment number 70. Thank you. Additional discussion on amendment number one to amendment number 70. Are you ready for the question? The question being, shall amendment number one to amendment number 70 pass the House? Members may proceed to vote. Will the clerk please lock the roll? Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Will the clerk please announce the vote? 39 yeas, 1 nay. The vote of 39 yeas and 1 nay. Amendment number 1 to amendment number 70 has passed the House. Amendment number 70 is amended as before the body. Representative Johnston. Yes, in brief, um, I was, um, when the colleague to my right had asked to have some data as far as the department, it came to mind that I realized that the department has um, currently their hired Evergreen that has a real-time raw data service and we're collecting it on this and they are getting reports. And so this does not, should not have any impact to the agency, um, but I think it does, it would help us as we're setting policy to have access to these reports. And so this is a friendly reminder to the agency that they have the reports and they need to share them with us. Thank you. Is the objection maintained? Yes. The objection is maintained. Further discussion? Representative Seaton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to clarify that as, uh, as I'm reading this, we are talking about reports uh, that are made, not uh, emails, not uh, communications between a third party and the department, because that would be very intrusive and would lead to um, a large amount of um, uh, misinterpretation of, of data. So I just wanted to make sure that we're talking about reports that are generated. Those are reports that are uh, complete reports, not um, just inner um, uh, between offices and or between consultants and the uh, interim um, analyses. Thank you. Representative Tilton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank uh, my colleague uh, next to me here for, um, during um, a previous amendment, she turned to me and um, let me know that there is some data that is being um, collected already through um, a third party called Evergreen. Um, although this doesn't fulfill all of the data um, and metrics that I was uh, searching for, it does cover the, um, um, the concern that we had about having the department have to spend more time collecting data. So we found that this, some of this data is already collected, and this amendment would allow us to have, as legislators, to have access to those reports that are already 
being um, put together by Evergreen. And I just would um, like to be shown as a co-sponsor on this amendment. Thank you. Representative Sadler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this amendment. Uh, we have seen the Medicaid program in the state of Alaska undergo a lot of significant changes with expansion, with application for and receiving waivers, with requirements for interagency cooperation. Uh, we had a large Medicaid reform bill, SB 74, which requires a, a, a large number of pilot programs and efforts to try and reduce our uh, health care expenses. Now, Mr. Speaker, we cannot require us as legislators to read all the many uh, reports uh, that are re sometimes encouraged, sometimes intended, and sometimes required of us to receive and read. Um, but I would encourage people strongly to, to make advantage of the opportunities that this amendment will provide to give us information about the Medicaid costs and the programs and uh, to consider them very, very carefully as we consider budgeting for our largest, most costly uh, uh, state uh, budget, that being for the Department of Health and Social Services. And as amended, it properly provides for protection against uh, uh, invasion of people's confidential privacy. So it's a good amendment. Representative Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd also like to be um, shown as a co-sponsor of this amendment. All we've heard during the amendment process is who did we talk to, where did we get our data from. Well, here you go. We, they won't have to ask the question next year when we're talking about this topic. Thank you. Representative Guerra. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm going to support the amendment. I, I just um, want to state on the record that in my view, um, uh, after being cut as much as it has been cut. Uh, this is a department that is trying to do its best with uh, limited resources, and um, I think they are as responsive as they can be given their resources. So I don't want this amendment, from my view, to be viewed as any sort of criticism of the department that they're not doing their job. They have $100 million less uh, than they did in 2015. If uh, you don't count um, this year's Medicaid enrollee increase, it's a $200 million cut, and that doesn't include all the cuts that had to be made just to maintain for inflation. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I commend the folks who work very hard at the department to protect our most vulnerable people. Thank you. In wrap-up, Representative Johnston. Please vote yes. Are you ready for the question? The question being, shall amendment number 70 is amended, pass the House, members may proceed to vote. Will the clerk please lock the roll? Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Will the clerk please announce the vote? 39 yeas, 1 nay. With a vote of 39 yeas and 1 nay, Amendment number 70 is amended, has passed the House. Representative Rauscher. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, serve notice of reconsideration of my vote on uh, six, Amendment number 66. Brief it is. Uh, 